uh, the hospital attack that took place, uh, you know, uh, against Gaza. Uh, there has been a statement that has been issued by the Israeli Defense Forces. They've refuted the claims made by uh, the Palestinian side that Israel was behind the bomb explosion at the Al Ahal Baptist Hospital in Gaza. Uh, the IDF. Uh, has poked holes in claims made by Hamas that several people had been killed in the explosion. The IDF also questioned claims by the Hamas-controlled health ministry in Gaza that several people had been killed in the explosion. Uh, the IDF maintains, and I quote, that if 500 people were indeed killed, um, or 471, which is the latest update from the Hamas-controlled health ministry in Gaza, uh, where are all the bodies? If so many people were killed, where are all the bodies? Meanwhile, with us on the broadcast is Major General Sudhakar Ji, who is a defence expert. Uh, good morning, sir, and thank you for joining us on NewsX. Uh, sir, what do you make of this latest statement by uh, the IDF? Yeah, good morning. Uh, thank you for giving me a chance after having waited for half an hour, more than half an hour. Uh, as regards the statement given by IDF, you see, in such a kind of a conflict against the terrorism, there are a couple of issues which I wish to highlight. First and foremost is that there is there are multiple multiple uh, types of warfare which are in progress. Presently, what we are witnessing is a standoff kind of a counter-terrorist operation which is going on with the help of Israeli Air Force, with the help of Israeli guns, that is the artillery, with the help of Israeli drones. Also, alongside, let's be mindful of the fact, uh, given uh, the status of Israel Armed Forces being the best in the world, I'm sure they would be having some kind of a cyber offensive, some kind of an electromagnetic emission attack against uh, the, the Hamas, as also some kind of information warfare, a countermeasure to the information warfare or the social media warfare which the Hamas would be resorting to or are very much resorting to. Yesterday it was in the news that they are making extensive use of Telegram. So what it brings to me is, is that it's the right thing that the IDF has given a statement to rebut the allegations of the, Palestine, uh, of the Hamas in such kind of conflict uh, accidents are bound to happen. What Israel has proven is a couple of issues. Firstly, whenever they have carried out aerial engagement of any target, it is based on specific intelligence and they have gone in for surgical strike. Whenever surgical strikes have been undertaken by Israeli Air Force, they have created deep craters. Whereas the pictures provided or they have actually uh, gathered from open media, I suppose, after the rocket attack in the parking place of the hospital, there are no craters. So that goes to say that the aerial attack missiles have not been launched by the Israel Army. Similarly, there are many other things. The number of vehicles which are parked after the attack are far too many. Uh, contrary to a kind of a disaster, the scenario would be actually you know, unfolding there. So uh, likewise, it appears that it is uh, been a kind of a misfire or kind of a shortfall of a trajectory or a projectile which has been fired by the Hamas from Gaza Strip and it has fallen on the hospital. It appears that it is part of the ongoing information warfare. That is what I want to highlight. For all you know, you raised a very important point, Pia, that if there are 500 casualties, why there are no pictures of casualties in the hospital? Without any pictures, how can they substantiate this particular allegation? So therefore, he goes to say, let's not fall into the trap or by the game. The Hamas are out for a very, very detailed, calibrated information warfare. This, to me, and as for my assessment, is part of that information warfare which is being leveled against the Israel armed forces so as to make IDF the, so as to make the Israeli defense forces defensive. They do not want to undertake the, the ground wave offensive is still waiting. It has not started as yet. When the ground offensive, it has to be undertaken by Israel armies. I am one poor person that India is a great supporter of counter-terrorist operation. No matter where it takes place, we are in support of Israel. They must carry out ground offensive because by carrying out aerial strike or by artillery guns, you cannot neutralize the Hamas. 
for me, my research, there are almost about 30,000. We are roughly taking into account 15 to 17,000 Hamas there in Gaza. And out of that, if the military and the political objective or the aim has to be formulated, I would recommend that IDF would do well by identifying the top leadership, which it's already undertaking, top leadership of Hamas to be neutralized, followed by the cadres and the strength down below. That also has to be taken into account and be neutralized as early, early as possible by gathering specific crystallized information, undertaking surgical operations so that the collateral damages are actually minimized. And second point I wish to highlight is that this ground offensive, whenever it starts, it's not going to be an offensive by tanks or by guns or by BMPs or by the, the army vehicles. It is going to be a troop intensive. Infantry has to carry out clearance of the lanes, house to house clearance, room to room clearance, and they have to base their operation on specific intelligence. The Hamas are believed to be uh, using one floor in a building, in a multi-story building to launch attack on the enemy. They shoot and scoot, they change the position, go into the next building likewise. So fighting in built-up area or urban terrorism, counter to that, is going to be very, very time-consuming. And therefore, the IDF would do well if they can prepare the intelligence, carry out a very progressive kind of a ground offensive, uh, predominated by the infantry or the ground troops who are going to sanitize and clear them room by room, house by house, uh, and also uh, believe that every sensitive installation, like hospital, it is believed, it is learned that below the hospital there is an ammunition dump. So what do you do in a case like this? So if there is an ammunition dump below the hospital, I think they need to undertake the mission-oriented kind of uh, operation to neutralize the ammunition dump in such a manner that the collateral damage is also avoided or to take stock of the ammunition dump, uh, seize it in such a manner so that the ammunition can be evacuated from where it is, brought to a safe place and destroyed. So that is the kind of, and also below the school, hospital, malls, and you have the marketing places, such like, uh, you know, uh, you have the colleges, you have uh, uh, the, the information center, exhibition centers, you have uh, different kinds of uh, the establishments below which the ammunition dumps, the missile storage, the logistic bases are located. And also, let's be mindful of the fact that Hamas have developed a very long meandering tunnels, almost as deep as 200 meters under the earth. Although Israel has got seismic sensors, but operations through the tunnels, again, is going to be very, very dangerous and very challenging. Therefore, it can be done only by the ground troops. Israel army is known to have very well-trained and uh, uh, with state-of-the-art experience in such kind of combat. So they would be able to do well. But all I am saying is that uh, let's not ignore the fact that these Hamas, they may lay hands on the pathogens or the NBC, the nuclear biological chemical warfare, when the tunnels are struck from one end, the exit and the opening, uh, the entry points have to be actually dominated by the IDF, and they may have to be bombed uh, by, by different means. So all these are kinds of intricate issues. The seaside also has to be dominated. The space has to be dominated. They have got the best of intelligence with the U.S. having come in. And I really don't see that uh, they, they will not be successful in this operation to eliminate, to neutralize the complete Hamas. Having said that, the world order, having heard uh, Mr. Sanjeev, the global order today is looking out, is yearning for peace and harmony. The focus has had shifted from Indo-Pacific to Central Europe. Now it seems it is shifted from Indo, uh, that is the Central Europe, to the Middle East. The Middle East is fraught with such kind of dangers that it can flare out any time and expand from the restricted area of Gaza Strip to Lebanon, to Syria, to Egypt and all the neighboring countries around. Therefore, the cards have to be played very deftly. The U.S. has a very important role to play. I am I'm sure the diplomatic uh, uh, parties are ongoing and the key stakeholders, namely Iran, 
and uh, uh, the Saudi Arabia, they have to be kept engaged so as to come to a meaningful and substantive kind of end state. So when you talk about the military aim, you have the top leadership of Hamas to be neutralized, you have the cadre strength to be neutralized, you have the command, control, communication of the Hamas to be neutralized and to be decimated, you have uh, the, the infrastructures to include the, the, uh, the, uh, the built-up areas wherever their headquarters and uh, the tunnels have to be neutralized infrastructure which also would be including their training centers they have their training centers establishments so such like places they have to be they have got underground bases and in the underground bases uh, at some place they have they are holding the hostages numbering beyond 250 or so uh, going by the latest count so all these things should become the military aim. As far as the political aim is concerned, I think we are in the 21st century. We would do well for the global order if the pragmatism is applied. Pragmatism is the cat is black or white. You know, long time back, Deng Xiaoping had said, it doesn't matter as long as the cat is catching the mice. The need of the mice in the hour is actually peace and harmony in the global order. As long as we address the aspiration of the Palestinian give them a sovereign and with, uh, 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 with, uh, with territory, with integrity, I think, and recognized by the highest global apex organization, I think the political aim would be well crystallized to be actually uh, uh, heading for. So therefore, put together, this operation cannot be done in a blatant manner. It has to be done in a calibrated manner. It has to be done in a absolutely on an escalatory matrix. Uh, from a local level to a uh, uh, higher regional level, from the regional level to the global level, if things uh, uh, put up uh, this thing, a push comes to shove. Otherwise, we should try our best to actually address the issue at the local level. Back to you, Pia. Uh, yes, sir. So, I'd like to ask a follow-up. Considering you mentioned uh, Deng Xiaoping, uh, China has also chimed in. They have uh, strongly condemned uh, the attack on the hospital in Gaza and they have called for a ceasefire. I'm quoting what they're stating. They state that uh, we mourn for the victims and extend sympathies uh, to the injured. China calls for an immediate ceasefire and secession of hostilities. Uh, but this is rather interesting uh, because earlier this year, uh, Xi Jinping had and uh, China had maintained that they would try to broker peace uh, between Israel and uh, Palestine. This of course had come after it had brokered uh, the deal between Iran and Saudi Arabia. So what do you make of uh, China's stance and uh, what do you think are the cards that Xi Jinping is playing? Yeah, excellent question raised by you through and through, right from day one. I think uh, there are far and few people, <laughs> apart from me, who have raised this issue that the elephant in the room is China. We are um, missing the woods for the trees. There is a big strategic game going on. And mind you, barring for communist state, even in, in communist states, every state has got a deep state. If this conflict has got any linkage, well, uh, you can surmise that there is an election round the corner in the US, there is going to be election in, in India, election in Taiwan. So important stake stakeholders are actually there, they have got their dots and each of these dots have to be joined. There is a deep state in each of the states. So the, what I am coming to is that China is going through a very, very challenging time internally as also externally. Externally it has been isolated by almost every nation state except for one or two maybe say uh, russia russia is on need based russia actually doesn't like china but it is uh, it is driven by the necessity it is actually embracing going born in for a tight embrace of uh, china uh, north korea or uh, let's say iran cuba to some extent i would say and also China is having a tough time as far as the internal situation is concerned, whether it is economy, the economy is in a slum, it has not been in order to sustain its 878 million people who were below the poverty line, they had been lifted up by 2017 from below the poverty line, 878 million people. In order to sustain them and keep them in that level, China needs to have double digit rate of growth year by year. As on today, 
with great difficulty, they have just about improved from minus 0.5 to 2.5 on nearing 3. Their target was 5% rate of growth. They have not been able to. In foreseeable future, the economy is likely, unlikely to revive. Next is about the zero pandemic situation which they had created on the own. It has had a telling impact on China. The, the, the real estate, whether it is Evergrande or you talk about the country garden, country garden has collapsed. They're almost close to $1 trillion is going to be written off like nothing. So therefore, uh, also you have the technical behemoth, uh, they have a common prosperity program, the brainchild of Jin Jinping, which is not taking off. They want to take money from the rich people and give it to the poor. It's not working out fine. The, the, the HR policy, human resource policy, from one child to three children, the transition is not smooth. People are scared to go in for three children because the cost of living is so high. And similarly, the military, the modernization of the Chinese army or the armed forces, whether it is PLA or the PLAN or the PLAF, the whole modernization process on paper, they have been showing between 2015 to 2022, the modernization has taken a quantum significant leap. But it is not so. Every modernization is fraught with corruption, or also misleading objectives, and the targets which they have claimed to have achieved, unfortunately, the rocket force that we can talk or take the reference of is gone through a huge process of corruption. That's why you find the top leadership, almost all, everyone has been chased. They have been sacked. The defense minister has been sacked, despite in the fact being in the core group of group of seven and within group of seven, the group of five who uh, formed the coterie for Xi Jinping. He's the, the blue-eyed boy of Xi Jinping. He's missing since past two months now, two plus, two months plus. So uh, well, uh, they have gone through natural disaster. There is a huge shortage of water. Uh, there is an unemployment problem. There is also a China plus one policy in the global order today. The industries have, multinational companies have started moving out Decoupling instead of decoupling, de-risking and de-diversification is underway. Lots of companies are moving out. Uh, there are sanctions which are imposed against China. And also, military seems to be getting out of hand. Here is a case in point of submarine, nuclear submarine, nuclear-powered and nuclear-armed submarine, which has been targeted to reiki the subsurface of Taiwan Strait. It was supposed to be moving towards Taiwan Strait. But how did the submarine lose its way and went towards East China Sea? There is a trap laid for submarines of United States and United Kingdom. The, the Chinese submarine has got trapped into the chain. There is an ambush laid underwater. And 55 soldiers have died. There is a radiation impact. So China doesn't want to shift focus of the global order today to Indo-Pacific, which is the pivot, the number one enemy of the global order of USA as per the national strategic document of 2022 November is China. China is very about the, uh, the concentration of the forces shifting towards Indo-Pacific. But China is also mindful of the fact that it has to take Taiwan sooner or later by peaceful means to start with. If that doesn't work out, Maybe by kinetic means, maybe. Also, China is mindful of the fact that if Taiwan is taken over by China, by kinetic means, it may have to lose the hub, the hub of the semiconductor industry. Close to 65 to 70 percent of the semiconductors, high-grade semiconductor chips, are produced in Taiwan. 85 percent. 85% of the uh, sophisticated high-grade chips are produced in Taiwan from TSMC. If that goes, the electronic industry of China also goes, because the complete electronic industry of China is dependent on the semiconductors which are produced by Taiwan. So there are, it's a catch-22 situation. Taking all these perspectives in view, there is a strategic rivalry Let's not lose sight of the fact that China's aim and ambition is to restore, uh, to rejuvenate the Middle Kingdom earlier, the better, but not later than 2049. So as to challenge the superpower of the world that is USA. 
that is the central aim they also by achieving that they want to redeem the century of humiliation for one century or more china was humiliated by one and all they were invaded from all sides particularly the eastern coast line so they want to restore they want to assert the middle kingdom concept by 2049 maybe earlier in order to do that the bri which they had undertaken now commenced in 2013 it's a concept by jin jinping which is failing miserably they celebrated the 10th year just uh, two days back but in that it is seen that officially they have come out with 26 names of the countries who have um, uh, put up their cases for withdrawal from bri and officially it is more than 49 countries who have raised hands at the peak period of bri 160 countries had been contacted and had been approached 1 trillion dollar us dollar have been invested by china in all these countries or close to 1 trillion dollar so the money is not coming back it is a blind investment so therefore to address all these issues and he has come up with two new or three new schemes global development initiative global security initiative there is a third one which is also coming up from his side they want to go away from the old four year diplomacy or the, uh, the the three warfare system they want to actually go in for the diplomacy in china today is the biggest weak point they want to address the diplomacy by going in for changing the stance and profile of the method of diplomacy becoming friendly with the countries rather than saying that uh, bri is actually for economic development they want to tell people that we are there to support you provide you security that's why the security initiative is being extended so it is bri under different names so under these circumstances china has invested a lots of money 450 billion dollar in iran over a period of 25 years it has invested 65 billion in saudi arabia saudi arabia has already established aramco company has established a refinery in china their mutual dealings or the trade dealings are actually going up by leaps and bounds it has invested money in jordan in turkey in iraq in israel itself in egypt name a country it is there so what i am coming, uh, coming to is china is investing lot of effort and energy to assert its authority in the strategic level so as to secure a mileage that that not withstanding what the world thinks about itself whether pandemic or after pandemic it still is talking about peace and harmony the way it is brokered peace between iran and saudi arabia it is still making an all out effort to bring peace and harmony between israel and palestine based on the two nation concept it still is in a advantages position it is in a superior position than that of the existing superpower that is the usa and it will be able to give result and bring peace between two warring faction or, or the war between israel and hamas and israel and palestine later and therefore it will have a strategic victory over the ongoing conflict for more such videos subscribe to the newsx youtube channel hit the bell icon